Hi, and welcome to this virtual fireside chat with PNN Group and Frollo. My name is Piet van den Boer. I head up the marketing team at Frollo. My two guests are Eric Fenner, General Manager of Technology Transformation at PNN Group. Hi, Eric. Hi. And Gareth Gumbley, founder and CEO at Frollo. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Pete. So I'm sure you all know PNN Group, which operates the PNN Bank and BCU retail banking brands. And most of you will have heard of Frollo too. If you haven't, we're a purpose driven fintech. We help banks, mutuals, lenders, and fintechs use open banking to deliver better customer outcomes. Some examples of banks that we work with are Vault, ANZ, Beyond Bank, and of course, PNN Group. And in the next 15 minutes, we're going to discuss how PNN Group and Frollo are partnering to deliver more value to PNN Bank and BCU customers through open banking. Now, before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, you can ask questions in the live Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. I hope we'll have time. And if we do, we'll answer them at the end of the session. If not, I promise we'll get back to you individually. Also, feel free to reach out directly with any questions after the session. So let's get started. Most customer-owned banks are already sharing customer data as part of the, uh, the open banking regime. So probably you're familiar with the data holder side of things. Now, Gareth, why should customer-owned banks care about using open banking data to compete? Sure, thanks, Pete. Um, I think uh, most importantly, I think there's an opportunity to deliver a better experience for customers and deliver more value to customers. And I think, you know, as member-based organizations or customer-owned organizations, then you know the purpose of your organization is is really to drive better outcomes for members and i think that transparency of data is what's really exciting about um, what we can what we can get from open banking along with efficiency in processes so we can streamline efficiencies we can use data to pre-populate forms and verify identity and a number of other use cases so i think that's exciting but if i think about most people's open banking journey that i've witnessed it would be the very beginning we think about you know, we've now got a regulatory requirement. We need to put data out. We have to push it out to people. And then the next immediate um, thought is, well, I now need to defend that data. Now everybody can see my data. Everyone else can see what my share of wallet is. Um, it starts to get a little bit scary. And then finally, you know, people come to terms with that and then move to compete. And I think that's really where we get the opportunity to build better products for customers. We can use the data to deliver better outcomes and truly deliver better experiences. So, you know, I'm probably a bit over over it. Um, enthusiastic about open banking, but you know, certainly compete is the one I would aim for. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Gareth. So Eric, p and Group recently got accredited as a data recipient, and you were one of the first customer-owned banks to announce that you're gonna use open banking data to benefit your customers. What excites you most about the open banking opportunity? Uh, well, first, the Gareth's excitement sort of overflows to everybody around him, so that's always <laughs> good. Um, but, but seriously, to us, this is the next step in an ongoing journey of transformation for the bank. We've earned a five years or so as an We've been using state-of-the-art technology and particularly key industry partnerships to transform the lives of our customers. So we were one of the first banks in Australia to launch Tap and Pay. We were the first to provide virtual cards and instant card provisioning. And we've been able to leverage our award-winning mobile app for the benefit of BCU customers following the merger a year or so ago. So Open Banking Compete is the next part of our digital enablement journey, um, focusing on making banking easier for our customers. Uh, and that in particular includes their ability to manage their overall financial well-being. Um, through open banking, uh, through the compete side of open banking, we can reimagine the future of banking. And, and that would be enriching the lives of our customers, offering greater financial empowerment and a superior customer experience. Um, yes, we're the excited, excited to, to announce that we're the third customer owned banking group in Australia to become an accredited data recipient. And as you point out, it's, it's a compliance <laughs> thing to give your data away to everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a transformational thing to become a data recipient. Um, and so this is gonna allow us to act on behalf of our customers, collecting relevant information from 
the other data holders and provide tailored product or service offerings that are easier to use, save them time, and are more convenient for our customers. And as you observed a moment ago, we're partnering with Frollo to deliver the first of hopefully many of these features. All right, well, thanks, Eric. Um, it sounds like open banking could really offer some great opportunities to deliver value to your customers. So let's make this a bit more specific. What can PNM Bank and BCU customers expect to see from this partnership with Frollo, say, in the next six months? So we're testing now. We're, we're going to initially offer our customers a more holistic and enriched digital experience on, on the mobile app with a person, what we call personal financial empowerment platform, and that'll be launched in early 2022. Uh, this will complement our existing suite of, of digital banking tools, and it will empower the customers to get much greater visibility and much greater control of their money and their, I guess, their behavior with money uh, and, to, and to get that control their way. Um, and so we think of this as customer-centric technology, uh, and, and the goal is to solve key financial pain points that they have, and, and in particular, over the next six months, money management and going forwards, the home loan application process. Uh, and ideally, not only will it make it easier to bank with us, it'll make it, make it easier for our customers to get ahead. Thanks, Eric. I'm sure PNN Bank and BCU customers will be happy to hear that. Now, Gareth, um, now that each of the big four have announced their intentions to use open banking data, and customer-owned banks like Regional Australia Bank, PNN Group, and Beyond Bank are either live or will be going live soon. What does that mean for other customer-owned banks who are considering getting started with open banking? Thanks, Pete. Um, I think most importantly, it's important to recognize that really we're gaining momentum at this stage of open banking. So um, we recently did a survey across the industry. We had 62% of um, respondents um, have told us that they'll be using open banking data and creating open banking use cases in the next 12 months. Um, so, you know, with the amount of data that's coming online and increasingly more data and more depth of data coming online, we'll soon have over 90% coverage of data holders and data that can be used in use cases. And all of this is driving more urgency for banks and fintechs. And in particular, um, the, the announcement of the change in rules you know, particularly around the trusted advisor, which is quite exciting, where, you know, a consumer can share their data with a, a mortgage broker or financial planner. And then that data in turn then can be used to support a, a mortgage loan application or a financial review is very, very exciting. And this is driving a number of the use cases that and along with things like um, we're doing with PFM, um, you know, in personal finance management. So I think, you know, the important takeaway from this is that if, if you're a customer owned bank that others are consuming your data now, you'll see that pick up quite significantly over the next six to 12 months. Um, so if, if you're thinking about this compete analogy I gave you at the beginning, you certainly won't win a game of football um, by defending only, right? You, you can only win by scoring. And so you, you must play, you're gonna have to play in the game. And I think that's the exciting thing is, it's not about coming to the, you know, the start line today, but it's making sure that you're on the educational journey. The open banking is gonna make a difference. Um, it's exciting for your customers and it's something that um, I'd certainly be exploring quite vigorously. All right. So the time to wait and see is over. Noted. Yeah. So, Eric, if someone at a customer-owned bank is watching this and Gareth just convinced them to get started, what would be your advice to them? Hmm. Um, <laughs> for, first thing, recognize that it's hard. This is not an easy journey for, for a small bank. <laughs> Uh, to go on uh, small pockets. Um, so the first thing would be to define a use case that provides value to the customer, to the business. Um, in, our, in our case, we've chosen uh, personal financial empowerment uh, and, and then get support across the business because you need funding and you need resources. And probably one of the really key things that, that we identified that gave us that power was having a product champion that would drive delivery. You need somebody to take it and run with it. It's not gonna happen by itself. The data collection and the consent management processes, those are difficult. Um, and, and so is getting value out of the data itself. Uh, and so working with a partner that has a solution will deliver much quicker than doing it in-house. Uh, and so we chose to work with Frollo and PFM. Frollo offered, in our case, the benefit of moving quickly, working with one, one reliable partner 
for data collection and consent management, which minimizes then the number of vendors and the integrations that we have to manage. And it gives us an element of plug and play integration with our, our two existing banking apps. Um, and the other thing is understanding that open banking is a journey. It, it's not about one use case. It doesn't stop at the first use case. Uh, so I think it's important to be clear on the purpose of the first use case and to, to ask questions, to learn and to innovate, and then drive beyond that first use case and start to make it a, a part of your native business. All right. Um, thanks, Eric. So the relationship between Frollo and PNN Group goes back quite a few years. Gareth, how would you characterize this partnership? Well, I'd probably take you back to the very beginning, Pete, which would be um, at a COBA conference, I did my first ever speed date. Um, and that was where I met PNN Bank, was around, you know, a bunch of round tables. I met a number of people in the, in the community. Um, and Kim Rodage was um, very kindly interested in our little business at the time. Um, and that's really what, what we began was a multi-year journey of education and um, great, I guess, I guess I'm very grateful for the support that PNN showed us as a small organization as we've you know, blossomed into, in, into quite a leader in the space. So I think you know, what I would say is it's, it's a long journey, the, this kind of relationship. You know, we, we built relationships at all levels of the organization through to the board and the exec committee. You know, we had great support from partners like AWS that really helped bring together PNN and Frollo um, and, and lots of getting to know each other, you know, to make sure that we had the investment. And, and certainly at the beginning, we didn't have the time to dance with every um, bank in, within COBRA. So we had to quickly work out who, who we had a chance with, I guess. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so I think PNN fit the bill and, um, you know, we're very excited to be here today um, talking about our partnership. Yeah. Thanks, Gareth. And how would you describe this partnership with Frollo, Eric? Uh, funny, uh, we, we didn't have the time or the energy to dance with a lot of partners either. <laughs> we, were looking, we were looking for a forward thinking and visionary collaborative fintech partner uh, and Frollo are, are, had established themselves. They were demonstrating that they were going to be a market leader. They are a market leader. Um, and, and we continue with them on this journey because they're proven technology. Uh, it's been live in market for what Gareth, 18 months or so now. Um, mm. We also then chose to partner with Frollo uh, for the for the accredited data recipient repository and for consent management. And this is a key enablement for us for future functionality and, and working with a company like Frollo that agrees to work with another vendor where Frollo provides the repository is a fantastic thing for us. Um, so we can we can deliver an uh, open banking solution then that ensures our customers can safely and securely share and manage their data and that trust that they have in us and the trust that they have in Frollo is going to be a key element of take, of take up. And it's really established itself with Frollo and us as a true partnership. There's a lot of uh, two-way conversation. It's not just give and take. So they've supported us with strategy and accreditation. They've supported us with navigating the regulatory complexities. And we've assisted with providing lots of feedback about how to do the integration and how to deliver value to the main customers. All right, thanks, Eric. Um, now, I think we have time for one last question. Um, and I'll have a look at the other questions that have come through after that. Um, I'll direct this question to Gareth. Gareth, what is the future for COBA as a group to get ahead with open banking? Well, I, th I think the future is um, really, you know, begins today. Um, start with your education, be brave, um, consume as much information as you need, seek the right partnerships, you know, that will give you that education and support you in your strategy and, and the, what, it, what is quite a long road. Um, set the future as being a long-term future, as Eric said. It's not, this is not a quick fix, you know, tick a box for open banking. This is about building long-term sustainable products and value to your customers. And I think there's a tremendous opportunity with open banking to do that. So I'm super excited, um, you know, and I hope you all are too. So um, if, you need to, if you need to learn anything else, reach out to us. Or, yeah, we'll be very happy to help. All right. That was, that was perfectly timed, guys. Um, I, I just had a look at the questions that have come in. Uh, I would just uh, like to address one, which is um, uh, asking about case studies or use cases um, across industry verticals and beyond banking specific. I would uh, I would 
say that we have just published the State of Open Banking 2021 with a lot of new use cases from all, from all around the world. Um, feel free to download that for free on our website. Um, that will definitely give you some inspiration. So that was us for uh, that was us for today. So thank you, Eric, uh, for sharing PNN Group's story, and thank you, Gareth, uh, for sharing Frollo's perspective. So if you are thinking about using open banking to deliver better customer outcomes, feel free to get in touch and see how we can help. Have a great day.